Hello, friends. Lots of you asked for Kia Stinger. That's why we have already shot a test drive of this car so soon. You'll get it. I'm looking forward to it. Some people may wonder why there are so many claims about Maybachs, but that's easy to understand because earlier there were only two Maybachs, there were a 52 and a 63, and they used to be real Maybachs, they were the cars that could easily run more than 300,000 miles, the maintenance will cost you a bloody fortune, but we knew what we were paying for, and today everything is different, the world has changed, everyone went mad, same as euro exchange rate, so in such circumstances the guys from Mercedes decided to take their 222S and glue a Maybach S63 and S65 logo on them and sell them, and then we'll see what's going to happen. An S63 did have some sales, and people started buying it, mostly young people who like to. Wow, wow. But an S65 didn't become any popular, so they decided to try a different approach. They decided to take an S-Class, put all the same Maybach logo on it, give it some luxurious interior and some other small features, take some time and give it the best materials, and maybe even give it some different chrome front grille, and start making even more money from people who buy it. And all because the car is going to have this wonderful Maybach logo on it. And that actually worked out. It really did, because everyone started driving these Maybachs, and if you don't believe me, you can check any Russian escort girl Instagram page. Or, for example, you can check the pages of all douchebags who earn on spark bets all these f***ing handicappers. You can easily find lots of pictures with them sitting on the back seats of this stinky, creaking Maybachs, boasting of their successful life. But you are watching D3, and my name is Eric Davidich, and I'm here to tell you the truth about these cars. Right now I'm driving quite an interesting car, cause it's having a Mercedes logo on the bonnet, but at the same time it's called Maybach GLS 600. So what did they do? They just created the base for many of their cars, and later they're gonna call them GLS 350, a GLS 450 and so on. And in the end they just made the top configuration and decided to call this car a Maybach GLS 600. But in fact, this is the same exact car with the only difference. They do not assemble this automobile in Moscow region. And that's it. Well, I never liked the Maybach Mercedes used to produce earlier in 222 body. I didn't like that car. That's a disaster. And also I would like to congratulate those people who rent this car as some VIP taxis and think they are driving Maybachs. Well, congratulations, you are driving a 350 Mercedes. With all the same engine, it's just having a Maybach styling. It's just a matter of interior and exterior and that's it. So, everything seems to be wrong with this car. And when you think you are driving a Maybach, you are not driving a Maybach. Because a real Maybach must be a different car. 
so a GLS 600 is not in my bag. And after I have been driving it for some period of time, I cannot insist that this car is bad in some ways. It's interesting. And the man who actually owns this automobile uses it as it was intended. And this automobile was intended to drive its owner from point A to point B with maximum comfort possible. And I mean a very long distance. How much should it cost? Well, think yourself. The best configuration may cost up to 340,000. For comparison, a Rolls Royce cost about 475,000 or maybe 490. Do you still consider my back expensive? Because now it seems like it's not. In comparison, it seems okay. It has a 4 liter engine, 688 horsepower. As they say, the acceleration is about 5 seconds to 60. And I'm not going to check if it's true because who actually cares about the acceleration of this automobile? In general, this automobile is cool. And I like it right until the moment I start to pay my attention to all these small details. Because as always, the devil is in details. What the hell, is that a glue? Goddamn, I'm absolutely speechless. Absolutely speechless. I don't even know how to react to it. So now you don't say anything extraordinary or supernatural about it. No consequences of an accident. No, I don't. You don't see any valuation of its integrity. So you don't. No, I don't. Okay, then. Sit right over here. And look right there. Oh, Jesus Christ, now I see it. Oh no, what's going on? I can see you! I see you through a Mercedes! And look into the hood! Everything was cleaned and washed this morning! And check out how it looks now! How the hell can it be happening? No comments. I'm not making it up! I'm going to open the door. Listen to the sound attentively. Again. And now listen to the sound the trunk cover of this GLS 600 Maybach opens with 340,000. Kill me! Just when you know how it should sound, you're 100% sure that this is not the way it should be. Keep in mind that it cost 340,000 and open it. Seriously? <laughs> I need you guys to understand, we don't want to offend this car somehow. Engineers were trying to make their best working on this car, but not all of them. And it must be very upsetting for those who made their best, because when you open the trunk cover, you understand that the guy who worked on this thing did his best, and the guy who worked on this stitching, he did his best. You just look at this stitching, it's wonderful. You just look at these materials. Outstanding. And it's such a joy to touch the softest Alcantara. But what the f*** is this? What kind of a C student did it? Show it to them. And that is why it's so heartbreaking to say that this automobile goes second after the Rolls Royce. 
because the second place is still unoccupied, same as third and fourth and fifth. I would probably give this car a tenth place and not because there are other cars that can go between this car and Rolls Royce. Such cars simply don't exist so far. That is why these positions are free. And that's because when you buy a Rolls Royce, you understand what you are paying for. Every detail worth its money. And you pay for it in advance, so they are better motivated. So, my back. Can this company be trusted? I believe you can. And what about Mercedes? You better shouldn't. I mean today. And every day I understand that there are less and less car companies and famous brands that deserve to be trusted. You cannot trust Toyota anymore, because they want to save their money and they lie to you. And you cannot trust Mercedes anymore because of their attitude towards their customers and they refuse them in warranty repairmen when engines die. And you cannot trust BMW because they also do their own magic and tricks. They start doing this 5OD engine and then it begins breaking and falling apart and they simply discontinue it. So tell me, who should I trust? Audi? But it's the same Volkswagen. Is there any car brand I can trust and pay my money? and do my business without any worries that this car is going to die. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like this today. And that's strange. And also, I have a question to my back company. When you guys been working on this car and making this design and all this beautiful car, who were those people who approved it? I mean, for example, you gather like 200 people just to estimate the car and form their opinion, and you really came to the conclusion that this is beautiful. I mean, all you did to the car was just replacing three grills. You just took off three original Mercedes grills and decided that we need to put here a chrome grill and das will be fantastic. That's an incredible idea, it will bring us lots of money. Enjoy it. What the f*** is this? Can anyone explain it to me? How could that happen? This leather is torn. The mileage is 3000 miles. Just look at the condition of this leather interior. Look carefully at the stitchings, it's already ripped everywhere, though this is a brand new automobile. And look at this goddamn rubber seal, what is wrong with it? It means they didn't give much of a shit about this car and put shitty parts on it. This is simply impossible for the cars that cost more than 300,000. But you see it with your own eyes and pay your attention to the lower part of this bumper. Just look at these holes. If a normal sized stone gets into it with an appropriate speed, I guess... The driver will have to search for another job. And this is the first and the only time when I really advise you to put some extra metal grid on your Mercedes's and Maybachs. Talking about the doorstep. Do you want to hear how it sounds when he hides the doorstep? That's what's happening right beneath me and I can feel it with my ass. And yes, I know, all of my claims to Maybach are about some small details. But since they call this automobile a Maybach, it must be really cool. It must be comfortable and have the best quality. And it should not have all these small issues. And you have no right to build such a beautiful automobile. Though wait, no, I cannot say that about my back. 
How can you create such a big automobile, invest lots of money in it, make researches and tests? Though I really doubt they did. It doesn't seem like they tested it. They didn't need to because they already did that in GLS. And all the previous mistakes should have already been taken into account. The ones that GLS used to have. And it should have been perfectly tested. This car should never come to the market and being sold until it still has. Same old problems. But this is what we get. To be honest, I'm really surprised with people who already shot reviews about these cars and never told a single word about everything I show you. Just not a single word. When you get to the back seat, you really feel this is a Maybach. I don't understand why Davidic is telling shit about Mercedes's. I absolutely don't get it. For example, let's look at these gaps and moldings. Don't they coincide? Just look at it. Check it out. Here on the inside, it's as though Mercedes has given a GLS to an interior designer for a boutique hotel because it does feel like an exclusive experience in here. Now, you're going to need that if you're going up against things like the Bentley Bentayga or the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Actually, the GLS I used to drive this year seemed to me the top of luxury. But now I understand that the guys from Mercedes really know how to make a luxurious car even more luxurious. But this is a Maybach and every single detail you can see and touch in this car must look presentable. The only thing that I really don't like in Mercedes GLS Maybach interior is that despite everything looks absolutely cool and gorgeous, this particular thing looks rather rough. Everything else is absolutely amazing. Everything is just wow. I have to admit guys that without a doubt this interior is just perfectly done. A Mercedes Maybach GLS is a unique combination of comfort, luxury and technologies. This car is a gorgeous SUV, full of technological and pecuniary luxury, inherent to representative class cars. But with all the pure luxury back here, it's also worth noting that just everything is nice in the back of this car. Every material is either leather or this piano black trim, stitching everywhere, it looks gorgeous. <laughs> I just understood one simple thing that everyone who reviewed this automobile, they don't understand the shit in cars, they don't pay attention to details, but still try to tell something to people on YouTube. They must be ashamed, cause I don't understand it. Just a bunch of morons standing and talking about the car with a satisfied face. You know, this is a Maybach. Like this, looking out of the window. The car is shaking like this. And they're like, Maybach is awesome, go and buy it. Who the hell was assembling it? It doesn't sound like 340,000. How do you think what it may be? I don't give a shit what it may be. I only know that it must not sound like this. This is the example of how a car for 340,000 bucks should not sound. This is just a business class car. You are sitting in a big and comfortable armchair. It's like a flying first class with the only difference. Here are no stewardesses. But I'll tell you one thing. I consider every single car of such level stupid and useless. And Mercedes is actually proving it itself. Because most of the rich people in Moscow, they don't buy themselves these Maybachs. Because they tried them and they understood that a much cooler and a better option is to buy a V-Class. They simply make an office inside of it. He has plenty of space and they put huge armchairs inside of it. With massage options and all the stuff and they simply work inside of this car. All the businessmen I know usually try to keep everything that concerns their business secret. And same thing with their personal stuff. Like their houses, cars, personal and sex life. And the V-Class is big enough to simply have a special room for a driver and all the security guards. And the VIP has his own room to do his personal stuff. No matter whether it's a business meeting or a sex with a lover. Everyone in Moscow prefers V-Class, all the movie stars and even special forces. They simply arrange the interior the way they need. 
Plenty of companies can offer you different configurations. People love it and I would also call it the best choice. Lots of rich people actually want their car to look casual from the outside, but at the same time to be fully loaded inside. And this is a Mercedes GL. And it looks quite modest. But inside, that's a Feng Shui. The car from the left is a Maybach with 3000 miles mileage. And the car from the right is a custom design work made by Russian specialists. And this car has already run more than 60,000 miles. From the outside it will look like a regular Mercedes and no one will understand that's a Maybach, but inside that's a full-fledged Maybach. But the main thing you have to know is that all these parts and the mechanism and all the stuff that Mercedes officially put on their Maybachs. You can see in this car too, these are all the same original parts from Mercedes Maybach. And more than this, the guys who make it have all the necessary certificates and they officially have the right to work on Mercedes cars. And the maintenance of this car will cost you many times cheaper, simply because you won't have to overpay just for having this Maybach logo they put here. But some people like it and they want other people to see that they are driving a Maybach. And that's why they buy it. And also I wouldn't call this car silent. It's 62 or 63 decibels. But don't worry, because I know a car that is 68 decibels loud. That's a BMW M760 at the speed of 192 miles per hour. It's got only 68. This is actually a pretty good result for 300 miles per hour. This is very silent. And this car is 60 decibels loud at the speed of 30 miles per hour on an empty road where there's no other cars around it. Do you feel the difference? The commercials are lying about everything. About food. About building and real estate. About clothing. And lots of other services. That's the way the world works. The school children of today know they can be deceived and 19 years old girls today are different from the same 19 year old girls 15 or even 10 years ago today's girls are very smart they see the world different and they understand it different the world is different you can't afford yourself being an idiot looking at all of these brand logos like mercedes's bmw's audi's volkswagen's and trust every word they say don't look at Toyota considering it's eternal and immortal. That's not true anymore, the time has changed. But luckily or unfortunately, there are always people like me who speak the truth. They tell what they see and what they feel, who don't want to deceive you. And I honestly think that people who work in Mercedes and as a result in my bug company don't do their job good enough because they are making a product with an insane amount of problems and f cups. And keep in mind that today we told you only about things we have found ourselves, about issues we saw and heard. And imagine how many issues and f cups there may be inside of the car, in the mechanisms we don't see and cannot touch, like the software of the car. And there's lots of electronics in this car. It may be various geometrical mistakes in the suspension. Can it be possible? Theoretically, yes. So don't believe that this car is genius and that it's perfectly done. Never believe it. And of course, there are lots of cars that are even worse, like Land Rover. There are lots of cheaper cars and there are lots of more expensive cars. Cars of any price segment. And don't think that Rolls-Royce is the best car because I consider it so. It also has lots of issues. We just don't see them. They are hidden and they are different. They were smart enough to hide their f*** ups. So I want you to stay 
concentrated and attentive and care about your money. I don't want you guys to lose your money buying some piece of crap, taking credits or giving away all of your savings for such a big purchase. But most of all, I don't want you to consider such cars as Mercedes Maybach the best in the world. Cause they are not. I'm Eric Davidich, it's D3, see you guys. So I'm driving a Mercedes Maybach GLS that cost a plenty of hundred thousand dollars. The car has run only 20 miles and without a doubt there's a check engine light. And right now the car is simply dead. Let's floor it. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's 5 miles per hour, come on, let's go. It's 15 and 20 and now it's stopped, that's it, that's all. Please shoot the pedal, I'm flooring it. And now just listen to the sound of the working engine, this is horrible. 